Welcome back, students. In the last lecture, we talked theoretically about how we might move from data stored in a PostGIS database into valid GeoJSON that we can display in Leaflet. And in this lecture, we're going to actually write some PHP code that will do that. And we said that in order to do that, we need PHP both to send a SQL query to the database and also to convert the data that's returned from the database into GeoJSON. And so in this lecture, we're going to end with a theory and we're actually going to write the PHP code that will do that. So the first thing I'm going to do, though, is delete this testArray.php. That was just part of the last lecture, but we're never going to use it again. So I'm just going to delete that. And then I'm going to create a new file and I'll call it load underscore bald eagle dot php. And because it's a PHP file, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my opening and closing PHP tags. And then we're going to load this data from the database. So we're going to need a database connection object. And fortunately, in our init.php, we already have this code right here that connects to our WebMap 302 database which we've already loaded data into. So let's copy that. And then I'll go back to my load bald eagle PHP script. And this is going to give us a new database connection object that we reference with the PDO variable. And so we can send a select query to the database by calling the query method of this PDO data connection object. And in PHP, we access properties and methods of an object using this single dash and a greater than symbol. So our database connection object has a query method. We're going to pass that a SQL statement. So let's just say select everything from dj underscore bald eagle, I believe. So that's calling this method, but the method actually returns a response like most methods do. And that response contains the result of the select query. So let's create a variable called result, and we'll set that equal to whatever is returned from this query method. And then just for fun, let's echo out that result method and see what it is. So we'll use a built-in PHV function called var dump. That's handy for debugging because it'll let us see what's actually in this result. And then we'll go to Chrome and go to localhost, webmap302, and content. And then we'll call that load underscore bald eagle dot PHP function and see what it returns. It says undefined table. So I think this might be dj underscore eagle. Let's try that once and see what happens. Yeah, that worked. So it tells us what the query string was, and that's about it. Now we can get some other information from this result object, though, by calling some of its methods. For instance, this result object has a row count method that returns the number of rows that are returned. Yeah, it tells us 70. So there are 70 rows in the bald eagle data. And we could loop through these rows now that we know that there's 70 of them. We could use that to loop through. There's a, a number of ways that we could loop through the different rows. But the easiest one, in my opinion, the one that I like to do is I say for each result as row. And that sets up a for each loop that's going to run through all the rows. And on each iteration, it's going to return a variable called a row. And that variable is a PHP associative array that contains all the information in that row. So let's do this. For each iteration, use var dump to spit out everything that's in that row variable. And then to make it easier to read, we'll append some HTML line breaks at the end of each row. So let's try that now. So here it tells us for each 
iteration that the row variable is an array with seven elements. And then it shows both the key and the value of those seven elements. And so we have a, the first row has an ID of one. The second element has a key of geometry and the value of this binary data that contains the geometric information. Third element is called postgis underscore FID. And it has, in this case, a value of one. So here we have all our data. We're getting data from the database. That's good, right? Let's make it a little bit easier, though. Because row is a PHP associative array, we can use our handy JSON encode function to turn it into JSON. So let's try that now and see what it looks like. Yeah, there we have, we're getting the same data, but now it's in JSON format. And this is great, although we probably don't want to get this geometry back. That's not going to be useful to us at all in our program. So we can use the PHP unset function to unset the element with the key of geometry. That's just taking up a lot of space and it's not really providing us any useful information just the way it is. So we've removed geometry using the unset function. The rest of this is actually valid data. Now what we do actually want is not the geometry, but we want the geometry information in GeoJSON format. And we can get that using the postgis function as GeoJSON. And we'll pass that the geometry data. I'm also going to pass a secondary column to limit the number of decimal places to five. That'll save a lot of unnecessary data that's not very useful. And I'm going to give that an alias of GeoJSON. So that's going to be the name of the column header for this information that comes back. So let's take a look at what that does for us. So here we have a GeoJSON column. And we have this data that's in GeoJSON, but there's some strange things that happen because this GeoJSON contains some double quotes in it. And so when we encoded that, it saw that as a string and it added these escape characters. And that's actually not quite what we want. It's close, but it's not quite what we want. What we really want to do is, since it's coming back in a string form, is we want to decode that GeoJSON into a PHP associative array, and then it will encode properly. So let's do that. We'll say the value of the, say, the row element with the value of GeoJSON equals JSON decode of the row element with the value of GeoJSON. This should be a parentheses, not a square bracket. And so if I refresh the page, and now we're getting valid GeoJSON back without those escape characters. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a little confusing, I know. But we want the JSON encode to take associative arrays and turn it into valid JSON, and turn it into a valid JSON string. And what was coming back was already a valid JSON string, and so we had to decode it to an associative array. All right, so we're getting closer, but we don't actually want this GeoJSON to be a property of the row, we want that separate. We want that to be a separate variable called geometry. And then once we have that geometry, we want to remove it from the row variable, just like we did the geom field. So we'll unset GeoJSON once we have it already in the form of a PHP associative array. And then we're going to create a variable called feature. And it's going to be an associative array that has an element with a type that's set equal to feature. And then an element with the name of geometry that's set equal to this geometry variable, which remember is the decoded GeoJSON. And then we'll also have a properties element and that's going to be set equal to the value of row. And remember, we've already removed geometry and removed GeoJSON. So all that we're left with for the properties is the non-spatial attribute data, which is exactly what we want.
And so then let's echo out this feature that's encoded as JSON. And I think that what that will do will give us valid GeoJSON. So we have type feature geometry has a point in coordinates and then properties that has an object with all the data. So now we have valid feature GeoJSON for each row in the database, but we need to put those features into an array. So we'll create another variable up here before we start looping through. We'll create a features variable that's an empty array, and then we'll use the array push function in PHP to add the feature to the features array on every iteration of the loop. And then after the loop is done, we'll echo out the JSON encoded features array. And so let's see what that does. Yeah, so we have a square bracket to start. Then we have our feature. And at the end of our feature, we have a comma to start the next element in the array, which is also a type feature. So that's working. All we need to do now to get valid JSON for the whole thing is add this features array to a feature collection object. And so after we're all done, we've created our features array. We'll create a feature collection associative array. And that will have a type property with a value of feature collection and then it will have a features property with the value of that features array and then we'll echo out this json encoded version and run it again Ooh, on line 19 unexpected uh, we need an equal sign in there Let's try that again. Okay, so now we have a feature collection GeoJSON object. It has a property called features, and that features is an array of all the features in the database. So there we have it. We've queried the data in the database. We've converted that data into valid GeoJSON, and now we could take this GeoJSON and load it into Leaflet. And we'll see how to do that in the next lecture.